Okay, good. Uh, the seminar format is about 25, 30 minutes long. And you please you should keep your microphones muted. And after the presenter is done, we will have 10 or 15 minutes for questions. If you do not want your question, uh, if you want to speak uh, your question, you can just type it and I will read them as well. And we can catch up at the end of the question sections. Uh, and in that part will be not important. Uh, so I will let Andres to share the screen. Then I'm so on Andres. What? So uh, today's speaker is Andres Tsukiat uh, from the University of Buenos Aires. And he will give a talk uh, called New Paleomagnetic Data from the Sedimentary Cover of the Tandilia System, Further Geodynamic or Geomagnetic Complexities in the Late Ediacara. So, okay, go ahead, Andres. Okay. Okay, well, let, let's start. <clears throat> the principal objective of this work is obtain new paleomagnetic data for the Ediacaran Avellaneda formation and analyze the Ediacaran apparent polar wonder path of the Rio de la Plata crater. First of all, I have to mention some things about the Ediacaran. The Ediacaran is a very strange period of the Earth. Uh, there are a lot of things happen, some huge change and upheavals occur in this period. First of all, first of all we have a lot of paleogeographic changes with the breakup of Rodinia and the consequent amalgamation of Gondwana. Then a lot of biologic changes with the appearance of the first complex organism, the Ediacaran fauna, who, which became extinct by the end of this period. A lot of catastrophic climatic change with alternance of warm and cold periods and the hypothesis, the well-known hypothesis of the snowball earth. And the paleomagnetic data is not the exception. There are a lot, or in most of the cretons, there are a lot, the paleomagnetic data is very, very weird. Here, for example, here we have examples, uh, for example, Baltica, uh, here we have the apparent prior wonder path of this craton for the Diacaran. And we can see that there are these strange and large oscillations in this part, and that there are very large uh, displac displacements in very short period of time. The same occurs in Laurentia. These oscillations and very large uh, path in short periods of time, the same occurs in Australia, or here this strange path of central Gondwana, uh, and there are a lot of hypotheses who try to explain this strange paleomagnetic data. For example, very an, an anomalous fast tectonic drift for more than uh, 60 centimeters per year that is far away from the plate tectonic uh, limits. Uh, but I think that the, the two more um, discussed hypotheses are one is. Uh, that a super wonder event occurs in this period. A super wonder is the, uh, the is the solid the um, a movement of the solid Earth. The all the Earth tumbles like ninety degrees around an axis in the equator. Uh, and an special super wonder is an inertial interchange super wonder event that is is like very fast. And for some authors. Uh, maybe one or two inertia inter interchange super or one events could be interpreted from this data. And other authors think that the, the problem is the magnetic field, that maybe it lost its axial uh, configuration and it's, it's like an unpolicy behavior of the magnetic field, an equatorial dipole or a strong co contribution of the non dipolar field. Uh, or very strange configurations of the of the magnetic field and so on. But let's see what's happened in the real Plata Craton. So uh, here uh, we the study area is located in Argentina, in the Buenos Aires province, in the Tandilia system. These are the southernmost exposures of the Rio de la Plata Craton. 
Eh, eh, we work near the city of Olavarria in the Alicia Query. Have a picture. And we uh, analyze two different board cores, the TA33 and TA23, that are very close to each other. Regarding to the stratigraphy in the Tandilia system, we have a basement, this is a Buenos Aires complex, and above is a neoproterozoic uh, sedimentary cover that it lies in a horizontal position and it is undeformed. And is made up of the Villa Monica Formation, the Sierras Vallas Group, and La Providencia Group. The La Providencia Group is, is made up of the Avellaneda Formation, the main objective of this work, the Alicia Formation, and the Cerro Nero Formation. The Avellaneda Formation is made up of, in the, of a lower uh, section that they are mainly laminated mouths, that then pass through a reddish claystones in an upper section. The age of this formation is constrained between the Barker surface, that is an erosional unconformity, uh, that is associated with the Gaskier's glaciation of about uh, 580 million years or 90 million years, and the age of the Serenero formation, that is about 550 million years from fossils. In addition, uh, it's thought that the Avellaneda formation uh, records the um, Shuram isotopic excursion of about uh, 570 million years. So that is the estimated age of this formation. Here are the two stratigraphic columns of the analysis board cores. In the TA23 board core, we have a lower section that they are uh, only composed by mass, laminated mass, and an upper section that is uh, made up of reddish claystones. Uh, and all the board core have a mean dip of um, 26 degrees. The TA33 board core uh, is only composed by laminated mass, and uh, it is in a horizontal uh, position. So all the laboratory work was carried out at the uh, Laboratory of Biomagnetism Daniel Valencio from IGEVA, from the University of Buenos Aires. Uh, all the board cores were drilled centered on a fiduciary mark. In, here are the, 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 this, this fiduciary mark that they were on all the board cores. There is a scheme. This fiduciary mark coincides with the vertical and in coincidence with the down deep direction of the lamination. And it was fundamental because it gives a common reference mark uh, from all the specimens of the same board core and assuming that the deep uh, that the deep is constant along all the, the work core, it gives a um, common geographic framework for the for all the, the different uh, samples, the different work core. So then all the specimens, we slice it into a standard 2.2 centimeters long parametric specimen, uh, specimens, and we obtain uh, 42 specimens for the TA23 work core and 39 specimens for the TA33 work core. The magnetic remanence of each specimen was measured with a GR6 spinner magnetometer, and we uh, perform a pilot test using a single chamber oven and a LDA 3A demagnetizer for the alternative field demagnetization. But after this test, a high temperature demagnetization was the most efficient technique for isolate the magnetic components. So all the specimens were uh, thermally demagnetized following, uh, following these, these steps. To identify the magnetic components, we use the principal component analysis. And uh, in most of the cases, we found two different components. A soft component up to uh, 200 or 250 degrees that was always um, negative, and uh, a hard component up to 650 degrees that it trends toward the origin of coordinates in the side and the side of her diagrams, and we interpret it to, to be the characteristic remanence uh, direction, magnetization, and uh, presents both records, both polarity. So the soft component, soft component was crucial for reorientate asymptotically all the board cores. Why? Francis Chinis et al. in 2022, they performed some paleometric st studies 
uh, in the same units in the Avellaneda formation, but in La Cabanita Quarry that is located 10, kil 10 kilometers away from the Alicia Quarry. And they obtained two components and a soft component. They analyzed outputs and bore cores. Uh, this component was interpreted as post tectonic. And uh, with the information of the outputs, they could reorient the, all the bore cores and obtain very good results, very consistent results. So, as we uh, found the same component, but in the Alicia query, we follow the same technique. And what we perform, we rotate in a vertical, uh, with a vertical axis, we rotate uh, our component until it matches the component of Francis Chin in that way. So we perform this for all the work core samples. And this component A, uh, the component A obtained for the TA23 work core uh, is that. Then the same component was obtained for the TA33 work core. So regarding to the hard component, when we analyze the TA23 work core, we found something really interesting and something really strange. We see that we see that the Mars. Uh, it seems like they, they present different uh, a, a different directions from the clay stones, and we say, okay, why we treat them as a separated groups? Um, from one side we uh, um, define a component B1 where only the Mars were present formation. And a component B2 were only the clay stones, for only, only, only the directions of the clay stones. Here we can see that the, the component is different. There is a difference in declination and in inclination. Well, it's very interesting. In the tier 32 bore core, remember that there were only Mars present in this bore core, and we only could define the component B1. And this component B1 with more uh, reversals, more the, the more presence of reversal here. And uh, this component presents a, a very similar component that the one obtained in the TA23 bore core. So we uh, mix the both components and we made three, we, we did three different approaches. We made a mean, a mean direction considering only all the specimens, then a mean direction considering only the sample like the samples are the, the bore core fragments, no? Like, they are like the traditional paleomagnetic sites. Uh, and uh, the third approach was considering only the, the bore core fragments or only the samples with three or more specimens. This is like the most statistically robust option, but uh, here we can see that there is a no significant difference uh, between the three different uh, techniques. So uh, this direction uh, presents a, a positive fault test at specimen and sample level. And the reversal test performed at specimen level was a positive class B with a critical angle of 12.4 and an observer angle of uh, 7.9 degrees. So this is the component obtained by Francis Chines et al. in 2022. Here are the bore cores that they analyzed. And two of the bore cores that they analyzed were composed only by Mars. But, but the H9 bore core presents a lower section of Mars and upper section of Clayson. This is very similar to the TA23 bore core of this study. And in, uh, in this study, they, um, they obtained 246 uh, directions but most of them, most of them are from the Mars. Only a few of them are from the Claystone. So maybe, with because there are lots of directions, maybe they don't um, take care about the difference between the Claystones and the Mars. And we say, okay, why well, we don't separate them and we calculate the Mars and separate the Claystone as we perform in in this in this study. So we combine the directions of the Alisa query and the La Cabanita query. Here are the uh, only only the direction of the Mars. No, uh, it was easy to combine the results because Francis Chin et al. They um, use the same three approaches as in this work, so there was no problem to combine the, the data. And 
here are the, the mean components calculated by the, these three different methodologies. And this is the component obtained now with the, uh, with the considering the directions of the bulk core samples with three or more specimens. And what happened with the claystones? The claystones seems that they are consistent. So the problem is not only in La Cabanita Query, uh, in Alicia Query, because in the La Cabanita Query, we also found the same component in the claystone, but it was very different for the component of the Mars. And here we can see that you know, the, the, the coordinates of the direction obtained consider all the samples with more three or more specimens. So here are the two different poles, and they are very separated from each other. This is the pole obtained from the Mars, and this is the pole obtained from the claystone. So I think this is amazing. They are, they are far away. They're very different. So now I'm going to talk about the apparent power owner path of the Rio de Plata uh, Recently, there were two proposals. Two proposals. One is the model of Franceschini's et al. They, are, they present a, a, a modification in this, in this part of the path because they obtain the, this new, these two poles, the Cernor pole and the Avellaneda pole. And they realize that there is, that there is a very long path in a very short time uh, between the 580 and 560 million years. And they interpret that it could uh, reflect an inertia inter interchange to power wonder event. But recently, Kukat et al, in this work, we invert the polarity of these poles, of all the a pause that previous from the 580 million years. And we obtain a larger path, but this is very similar to the path of the West Africa Craton, uh, proposed by Robert et al. in 2017. Uh, these authors uh, think that maybe this could reflect two inertia interchange super wonder events. And Pukat et al, they made some paleographic recontractions considering all the all the, the all the most of the cratons. And they conclude that the, the paleomagnetic data uh, could uh, is, is, is in perfect agreement with these two inertia interchange super wonder events. The first will occur between uh, 619 and 590 million years. And the second event between 575 and 565 million years. In this uh, event, the, the speed, the rate was like 10 degrees uh, per million year. That is, is really fast. But what happens now with the new uh, data? Here are the two new uh, obtained poles, the 81 and the 82. The AV1 is very similar to that obtained by Francis Chinis. Uh, it's, it's almost the similar, the, the one obtained for the Mars. But here is the pole obtained for the Claystones. And it's very, very interesting that, uh, that it falls uh, near, it's superposed with the B2 and B2 poles from the West Africa Craton. So now the path is more similar is to, the, to, the, to the path of the West Africa Craton. But now, the, 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 the path is even longer. And there is the, the, this, uh, 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 this is a very, very, very fast movement in very short period of time. And uh, the question is, what is the time elapsed between the AV1 and AV2 poles that they are for the same formation? So Robert the Tal recently, they obtained new geochronological data from the C poles and the B1 poles. And they uh, come to two solutions. The first solution that they consider that is the most robust solution is that the C pole is about 570 million years and that the B1 pole is about 569 million years. This is only a difference of one million year between these two poles. It's, this is a rate, a speed rate of 111 degrees per million year. This is you know, extremely fast, even for a super wonder event. It's, it's, it's the anomaly fast speed. But a second solution is that the C pole is about 575 million years and that the V1 pole is 565 million years. There's a difference of 
10 million years between these two poles. And it gives a rate of 11.6 degrees per million year with a confidence bounds of 5.5 degrees per million year and 70.9 degrees per million year. This also is very fast for a super one event, but I know it's not 111 degrees per million year. No? So um, if this hypothesis uh, must be taken into account, this inertia inter interchange super wonder event between 575 and 565, the C pole must be assigned an age of 565 million years and the D1 pole to 565 million years. As the AV2 pole and the B1 pole coincide, we think we thought that the AV2 pole is from this age also, no? And the AV1 pole maybe could be from 570 million years is in the middle of the path. And this is in a perfect agreement with the uh, Shura misotopic excursion that is registered in the Mars of this formation. So what are the positive aspects of this theory that is registered in most of the cartons? And it's very easy to explain this intermediate position of the AV1 pole. But th there is a very, very fast displacement. displacement. This, this is a problem. But the second problem is, this is physically possible. Is this possible possible that the Earth, all the Earth, tumbled 90 degrees, and again maybe two times in a row? It's very difficult to explain. Uh, I could talk about the Tupra wonder like an hour, but uh, because there are a lot of studies. But for example, uh, what recently was a study of one adult in 2023 that found that this theory could explain very well all the adiacan glaciations. So maybe you can check this, this paper later. The other, uh, the other hypothesis is an anachronistic behavior, behavior of the Earth magnetic field. We know that, for example, the, re the reversions uh, occurs in thousands of years. So there is no problem the speed limit. And following the proposal of Robert in 2023, when they considered that the, the, um, the, the most probable solution is to consider the C pole uh, and the D pole and the B1 pole only separated by one million year, they think that all these poles reflect the actual dipole. This, this is like the, the real path, if, if, you, if I can say. And this is like an artifact because these poles represent the axial, the, the, the equatorial dipole. And uh, we, we, uh, here, here we can see when the, the Earth magnetic field was an axial position and then turns to an equatorial position. But this is a problem. The problem is the AV1 pole because this pole is in, the, in an intermediate position and this pole presents a lot of reversal. So an stable dipole must be recorded in, in this component. And this is very, very weird because now, now we need an axial equatorial dipole, an stable axial equatorial dipole, then an stable equatorial dipole, then an stable intermediate dipole, and then again an stable axial dipole. And again, this is this is very weird. So, what's the possible aspect of this hypothesis that uh, it register it could explain extremely fast displacement, but this intermediate position of the AV1 pole uh, is, is very strange and it's also the same problem as the inertia, uh, inertia interchange to wonder event. Is this is physically possible? Why, why suddenly the Earth magnetic field now change all this configuration and now it's in a quarter position and maybe then in an intermediate stable position? How it could be physically possible, no? Uh, so the conclusion of this war is, of this war is that two high temperatures were obtained for the same unit, the Vishnaya formation, one corresponding to the Mars and the other to the Claystones, and two different poles were obtained. That implies extremely fast tectonic drift for the Europa Patacraton during the Diacaron. And we discussed two different hypotheses. One is the that in an inertia, one or two inertia interchange super one of events may occur, or that the problem is that the magnetic field and a non-acoistic behavior of the air magnetic field happens in the in the diacaron. 
and we see what the, the, the problems of consider one or, or another hypothesis. So we'll okay, get here are the references. Um, thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you very much, Andres. Very interesting talk. Thank you. So uh, now you can uh, turn on your microphones to questions, to the questions. So if there is any question in the room. Uh, Brendan? I, I just had a, a very quick question. So you, you find this difference between the moles and the claystones. Um, and I just wondered if any of that could be attributed to sort of like any any form of fabric in the claystones. Have you checked them for TRM anisotropy or anything like that? Uh, can you because I don't listen well the, the, for the microphone. Can Sorry. Um, is there is there any sort of TRM anisotropy of the clay oh. stones that could explain the difference? Have you uh, checked for that? No. No. Okay. I I I am going to to show you a slide because I was prepared for for this question of mm -hmm. a similar question. I know that because of time I don't explain it, but I know that the, the problem is the inclination shallowing. No. And I know that we have to do this uh, an, an, uh, anisotropy oh, of TRM, not TRM, sorry, yeah, yeah. <laughs> of anisotropy of is this ARM, but we are run out of, of samples. That's the problem. That's the problem, but but yes, the, the correct answer is to to correctly uh, evaluate the inclination. If, if the claystones might have inclination shallowing, my inclination shallowing, we have to perform this ARM study. But here is the what we could perform. Uh, we try this is the, the 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 direction of the pole, and then we try to correct for initial shallowing uh, with an f a value of zero point six or Storswick, uh, with the, the the value that you Storswick Storswick uh, it all in the world of twenty, uh, and uh, we obtain this result that. The, the, it seems that the problem is not the inclination because it falls near the, the A2 pole. Then we perform some uh, the elongation test of Tokes again, but we, we don't have a lot, of, uh, a lot of specimens. And I know that it's not statistically conclusive, but we run out this uh, test and we obtain an inclination that was lower than the calculated than this, that, that the calculation, that the inclination calculated with, with this F value. And then another thing that this is maybe speculative, but Rapalini in this work, they perform a study in Los Barrientos formation that uh, presents the, uh, is, they are also red clay stones, uh, red clay stones, and they are from the Tandilla system, they are uh, maybe suffer this, the same geological process and uh, he performed this, this isothermal uh, remanent study and obtained an F value of 0 0.65. So the correction will be lower than that. Uh, and in addition, in this world, we have a lot of collaboration for a lot of sedimentologists who work in this area. And they say that the, the preservation of the Avellaneda formation is, is perfect. And there, the, there was not evidence of, of a lot of compaction in these clay stones. So I think that these studies must to be performed, but that for now, I think that the inclination, preliminary, I think that the inclination shallowing maybe is not a problem, it's not fixed, the, it, it's not the solution, I think. Thank you. Yeah, I yeah. also realized that my question wasn't very sensible because I was thinking about uh, volcanic rocks as I normally do. But um, thank you for answering the question I should have asked. <laughs> Sorry, I have a question. I can yes. I can read it. Uh, it's in the chat. So uh, Sengong says, 
If the field was non-actualistic, should we be careful about using the TK03 model to correct for the inclination shallowing? Uh, I, I don't think about that, but it's, it's an interesting question. Yes, uh, it's very interesting. I, I don't know. Yeah, it's a also okay. I have yeah, a question. Listen, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Um. First, yeah, if the field wasn't um what it is over the last five million years, you shouldn't be using TKO three. However, uh, I was just thinking, um, if you did it at the specimen level and not at the sample level, you know, the TKO three should be done at the specimen level. And you'd have a lot more samples and maybe the, um, the although your data did not look flattened to me, uh, but if you tried it on the specimen level, you'd have enough samples, maybe enough data points. No, to try. I, I, I try at specimen level. Oh, okay. But in the, in the, in the Claysons, here is the number in the Claysons, we have only uh, 39 specimens that's the the, the the you see no yes yeah and on the those actually do look a little flattened um but you you have to rotate it so that the mean is north south before you try to um unflatten it yeah okay Is there any other question? So I, I, I might have, I don't know if it's a question or a comment. I, I saw Andres in your distribution, like some elongation in north, south, but I don't, I mean, I cannot remember now in which, can we go back through your slides? Yeah. What what that could mean if it means uh, something? No, the the yeah. one before. Uh, you know, I I like, think that, that that maybe that maybe I I for example this 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 elongation are you talking about or what elongation? I think so. Yeah, in the north. So, yeah, yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think that maybe maybe so I I. I don't know, but when you maybe rotate the soft component to match with the component of Francis Chinis et al., hmm. you are, we made it not per specimen, per worker sample. And maybe mm -hmm. when you always rotate this uh, component to fix it to a, a fixed value, maybe the, the distribution I think that maybe it looks it's, more it's modified uh, okay. for, for that reason. But I think that yes, is 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 a limitation, is a limitation, but we have no other way to reorientate asymptotically the board course. And it is no other solution. So yes, maybe it's not ex exact this is solution because we we match like manually, we match the, the, the asymptotic orientation of the soft components. But it's the best we can do. Well, thank you. Okay, so if there are no more questions, we thank Andres again thank you very much. Thank you. thank you. Oh, and we are always looking for new speakers. We are full up to June, but we are looking for speakers in February.